Hey everyone, in today's video, I finally decided to get around to finishing my RetroPie arcade machine build. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, I also have part one and two available. Part one is buying all the parts, and part two is also just the basic assembly, assembling the buttons, and just showing you how the wiring's done. But today's gonna be focusing on part three, and that's just overall finishing the arcade machine, showing you guys the final results, and uh, painting, and all that good stuff. At the very end of the video, I'll also tell you my final thoughts about purchasing this kit through LEP1 Customs over on Etsy. So uh, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so firstly, the newest addition to this would be the bezel that's around the monitor. This was really easy to make, and honestly, I had the wood laying around at home. This bottom piece here is like an old piece of pallet wood. It's kind of nice to be a piece of pallet wood, but that's what it was. Uh, anyways, all I did was just build a frame around the side, and then I drilled them in with some screws. The only downside is, is now I have visible screws on the outside, but I think I'm going to leave them open in case I ever need to remove the bezel. I'm sure there's other ways you can make this to avoid this, but I really don't anticipate taking the TV out, so this way it doesn't bother me too much. Now after that was done, the next step was actually sanding down the cabinet. In the previous video, I did go over the arcade machine with a nail gun just to kind of sturdy up the machine a little bit. Um, so I have to sand all that down, add some wood filler to uh, cover some of the holes there and file that down a little bit, make it smooth. Now the only downside to doing this is if you're sanding MDF wood, which this is what it's made out of, it's really not that good to breathe in, so you should probably wear a mask or even do this outdoors if you can. Uh, this ended up clouding up the uh, room I was in after a short while, after sanding down the uh, whole cabinet. Now, after that was all done, I did have to remove all the buttons that I placed in the previous video. I did that assembly just to make sure everything worked ahead of time. So removing the diodes from the buttons is actually really easy. All you have to do is just twist it to the left and it should pop right out. Now, the only thing I will mention when doing this that I did was I taped every single one of these buttons and I included a number 1 through 16, I believe on all the buttons. That way I would know what order they would go in when it's time to put them back in. So you might wanna do that if you're doing the same thing as me. So once the sanding is all done, the next step would be to start painting this thing. Now I ended up taking a trip to Lowe's and I bought some primer, I bought some black paint, I bought some blue paint, and I bought some yellow paint because I kinda wanted to keep my arcade machine in the same style that my old banner was on the YouTube channel where it was blue and yellow. That's when I started it, so I really like the blue and yellow and I'll keep it going with that. Once I had all my supplies together, I just went home and took a roller out and I started passing the primer all over the arcade machine. It really was pretty simple. The MDF wood did kinda soak it up a little bit, so I ended up doing about three layers of paint. I waited about a day in between each layer, and I was really only working on the arcade machine on the weekends anyways, so after those three layers were done, I let it dry for the rest of the week. And this is what it looks like when it's all primed. Looks pretty nice, and you can see I taped up the uh, the monitor. This goes back into not wanting to unscrew the bezel, and I was confident that I wouldn't get any paint on the monitor, and I didn't, so I did a pretty good job. You don't have to do it this way, you can cover it up a little bit, but this doing it the way that I did worked for me. And now that it's all primed, I can finally start working on the next color. I decided to go with the left and right sides being like a royal blue color. I really like this color and it turned out pretty well. I did the same thing and I just passed the roller over the sides. I was kind of impatient. I didn't want to do a brush and be very delicate, but I also was confident that I wouldn't spill over the edges or anything. And I didn't, it came out pretty nice. Now I did the same thing with the blue. I did about three layers of paint. I waited a day in between each and then I started working on it on the following weekend. So once again, it was about a week time to dry. The next step after that was done was to do the trim around the arcade machine, and the trim was yellow. Now, this kind of sucked because I <laughs> I don't really have the patience to go through with a brush and just, I don't know, it's just not me. So I did take the roller to this, and I kind of spilled over on the edges, but I had a wet paper towel, and I would just wipe off the spots that I miss and then touch it up at a later time with the brush. And it was a lot faster that way. I hated using the brush, but there were certain parts where I couldn't avoid it, like on the marquee. I didn't want anything to potentially drip down on the monitor or anything like that. So I was very careful with painting the top half of the trim. After my trim was all done, I only had one thing left to do, and that was to paint the remainder of the arcade machine black. So the main parts being the back of the machine that not many people are gonna see, and then the front, like around the bezel and where the buttons are gonna go. But again, I hit this with a roller, didn't have any issues and Overall, the painting experience was pretty quick. So let's just fast forward and take a look at what this looks like all finished with the paint. And it looks great. Now, the only downside that I had 
was that I think it looks too bland. And I thought about this after I already put the blue on. I was like, I should probably get some type of decals to put on this, but I really didn't know what to do. So I went to my editing program. I whipped up uh, a few different things as well as working with a designer to kind of help me achieve what I wanted to achieve. So uh, I went through Game On Graphics and the experience was fantastic. I talked to this guy named Scott. He was a total bro. He helped me the whole step of the way. And the only hard part that I had during this was that uh, LEP1 Customs, I wrote them because I needed the dimensions of the arcade machine. That way I could provide it to the designer. That way he could, you know, design it correctly. But LEP1 was like, nope, we're not giving you that. <laughs> so I had to do all the measurements myself and then I submitted it to Scott myself. So let's just jump forward and see what I came up with. Now, when the artwork comes in, it was all curled up into like a nice little tube. That way it could fit all together and, and send. So the only downside was that when I took this out of the box, it was really curly and I couldn't hold it straight to get like a, a good feel of if I was going to be putting this on because I was very nervous during this process. I've never done any type of vinyl art and I didn't want to put it on and then unstick it, reapply it. I just really didn't want wrinkles. I really tried hard on this not to mess up. But um, I ended up grabbing my dad, which made it super simple. I was using clamps, but I didn't have enough clamps to keep it down. So I had him hold down one end while I applied the uh, artwork on the other side. So this is the gist of what it looks like, but I'll show you it when it's all put together and standing up. But first, before I do that, I also have to trim the edges of all the access that's hanging off over the sides of the arcade machine. So uh, just give me one second while I get that done. Honestly, this is pretty much like cutting grip tape for a skateboard. So this kind of came natural to me. So starting from the bottom, I did put my channel name in. I have Below Average Gaming. And slightly above him, I have Pac-Man getting the shit kicked out of him by some ghosts. And right above him, I have some bubbles. Now these bubbles are all pretty cool because I wanted to fill each one of these with a game that I grew up with and a game that um, you know I'm passionate about and have fond memories of. So I have Wild Guns, Super Mario Bros, The Mask, Crash Bandicoot, Donkey Kong Country, Bomberman Hero, and Spider-Man Separation Anxiety, and even Pokemon right at the very top. Going up a little further, you can see I have Player 2, so this will be the right side of the cabinet. All I gotta do now is just kinda lay it flat. I have a squeegee so I can apply the vinyl art. You wanna make sure there's no bubbles inside of this thing. It, it's, it, you don't want it, trust me. It's just gonna make it look like crap. And uh, yeah, let's just see how it turned out. And this looks fantastic. I don't wanna toot my own horn, but I'm, I'm really proud of how this came out. This is something, a project that I have that I can say I built this, you know, I did this. And it's just, uh, it feels like an accomplishment finally getting this done. I mean, I've been looking at this arcade machine for a while and uh, it, it was time. And on this, I wanted to keep things kind of consistent. So I have below average gaming at the bottom. This time I have Mrs. Pac-Man though, doing the ass kicking. So that's pretty neat. The bubbles are the exact same. I wanted them to match. I thought about changing the games out, but then I was like, nah, I kind of like it how it is. And then of course, when you get to the top, you also have your player one text. Actually, I did forget one thing. It's not finished because I needed to do a marquee. Forgot all about it actually because I ordered this when I made part two. So I've actually had this sitting for a while and it came out really nice. I also purchased this from Game On Graphics and it is my old channel banner. And I just, I have fond memories of it. And that's the whole point of this arcade machine is just giving me something to look at and just be happy about. So the next thing that I did was I took an LED strip and I just kind of wrapped it um, around the lower half and the top half of the uh, marquee. That way it'd be in like a rectangular pattern almost. And I think it would give the best lighting this way, but we'll see when I actually put that in. Now putting it inside of the arcade machine is super simple. There's some grooves right at the top and you have two pieces of plexiglass along with your artwork in the middle. And you, all you have to do is unbolt one side, slide it in and then screw it back in. Simple as that. So let's take a look at it with it all set up. And here it is just placed in the arcade machine. Give me one second here, I'll plug this in and we'll take a look at what it looks like when it's lit up. And it looks fantastic. I'm not gonna have to adjust those LEDs at all. It lights it up just well enough to where there's no light escaping from the, uh, the inside of the machine, meaning I can't see anything through the bezels or anything. So that's good, did a good job there. Okay, so I got all the buttons wired in the same way as the last video. And one thing I will show you is that I have a switch on the back of my arcade machine, and this is hooked up to the Raspberry Pi that's on the inside. All I have to do once the machine is plugged into the wall is just flip the switch on the back and the arcade machine will turn on. And it turned on just fine, no issues. All the buttons are lit up, so I can't wait to start testing this out. 
But first, for those of you who don't really know how to use the RetroPie, you can actually add splash screens and themes to pretty much everything. And you can see the one that I went with here is a bunch of soda cans, and it's got all of these systems on each can. It, it looks awesome. It, I really like this theme. Another cool thing too is when you're selecting the games, it, whenever you scroll, you hear like the, the tab of the soda can opening, and I think that's a really nice effect on it. Yeah, there's nothing like opening up a crisp can of Pokemon Fire Red in the evening, so let's go ahead and fire this up. Now, everything boots up normally just fine, and it runs just like it's... Perfect. I mean, you're also running a GBA game, which doesn't require much power. So the Raspberry Pi 4 was perfect for this and should be able to handle most games. I believe um, I can run up to N64, although N64 doesn't run with the best graphics. But, uh, but yeah, actually, let me show you an N64 game. So Super Smash Brothers runs fine. Again, the Pi kind of peaks with the N64 graphics, meaning it doesn't really get much better. But so far for the games that I did test, everything seems to run all right with not too much frame rate loss, so I'm not too upset in the least bit. So yeah, and another good thing about this too is that all these hookups are interchangeable with a PC. So if I ever have, say, a spare gaming PC, I could also throw that in the bottom of the cabinet and I would have more graphically inclined games like Street Fighter 4 or Street Fighter 5 running on the arcade panel, which that would also be pretty sweet. I have enough room, maybe I'll make a dual rig at some point. I also want to start figuring out light gun games, so I might make a part 4 showing you guys how to set up uh, gun games. So now I think I'm going to start wrapping up the video, but I will show you one more tip before I go. A lot of you are probably wondering like, yeah, that's great. You can boot up your games and stuff, but what happens when you want to switch games, stop what you're playing and go back? It's actually pretty simple. So I'm playing Super Smash here, but I'm just going to hold the coin button that I installed at the bottom. And then you're just going to tap the player one button. Once that's done, it should take you back to the RetroPie screen and you can select your games from there. It's really that simple. Now, let me give you my final thoughts on this. LEP1 Customs was a pain in the ass. I wouldn't recommend going through them, although I wouldn't say you're going to get a bad product going through them. Uh, throughout this, I was missing two batons. Uh, the dude wouldn't provide me the dimensions. I told him what it was for, that I was doing the artwork and everything, and then he was like, we have in-house artwork, you can use us. And I was like, what? So when I spoke with Game On Graphics, I was like, yeah, I don't have the measurements. I'm just going to have to get it myself. And Scott wrote me back and he's like, wait, are you, are you talking about LEP1 Customs by chance? And I was like, oh my God, he knows who they are. So I guess they actually tried to give LEP1 a lot of business at working with their cabinets and LEP1 also rejected helping them as well. So uh, just keep that in mind when going through this. There are other arcade cabinet alternatives that you can get through Etsy. I saw a nice one recently. It looked like it was made out of plastic, but it actually was, it looks like it can be disassembled very easily. And I thought that would be pretty nice. So if I ever go around making another one, I might do that. But I think I'm gonna end the video here. It's great talking to you guys, but I got some arcade games I gotta go play. See you next time.